Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel Career Designs. Now today we're going to continue with the LLM engineering course where we're going to start with the third chapter, going open source. So now to go open source, you're going to use Hugging Face, which is a very popular library. So you may ask, what is Hugging Face? Hugging Face is an AI and machine learning company known for its open source libraries and models that simplify development for NLP and ML projects initially launched as a chatbot project, Hugging Face gained prominence with its Transformers library, which provides pre-trained models for tasks like test classification, language generation, translation, and Q&A. So you may ask why is Hugging Face important? First, it gives easy access for cutting-edge model. Hugging Face democratizes access to state-of-the-art AI models by providing pre-trained models, making it easier for developers to leverage advanced ML models without expensive training or infrastructure. The second point, we have cross-disciplinary applications. The platform supports NLP computer vision and audio processing, enabling use cases across industries such as healthcare, finance, education, and entertainment. Third, we have community and collaboration. With a vast community of contributors and open repositories, Hugging Face encourages collaboration and innovation, fostering an ecosystem for research and practical applications. Then we have the fourth and final point, which is open source and customizability. Its tools and models are open source, meaning they are free to use, modify, and develop. This accessibility lowers the barriers for businesses and researchers. So you may ask, what does Hugging Face offer? It offers the Transforms library that contains pre-trained models for NLP tasks such as test classification, named entity recognition, summarization, then we have translation, and Q&A. So some models in the Transforms li library may be Llama, Quen, Mistral, and you may know DeepSeek also. Then we have datasets, a library with thousands of datasets across different domains for easy experimentation and benchmarking. We have also the tokenizer library, a fast and efficient tool for tokenizing text using NLP models. Then we have Spaces, a platform to develop, share, and mail applications using Streamlit, Gradio, or custom code. So now let's learn how to get the API from Hungry Face. So to get an API, you just have to click this link over here. And I'll paste these links down in the comments below. So I'm going to confirm my identity. And over here, we can you can just create a new token, token name, test. I'll put it as, and over here, we're just gonna press create token over here. So once you have done that, we'll just press done. And over here, we have just created a hugging face token. So I'm gonna delete this one. So now over here, once you have this hugging face token, you can continue. So now here we're gonna go to models, and if you look over here. We have DeepSeek with a staggering 1 million downloads. So here, when we click on DeepSeek R1, you can see that this is just exactly a Git repository. I mean, you're right, it is a Git repository. So this is DeepSeek R1. So DeepSeek R1 is a really, it's a really popular model that has just released. It grew in popularity as because it's an open source model that is beating OpenAI, Anthropic, and Gemini. So now if you look over here, here are the benchmarks. It has beaten uh, OpenAI in AME. Then it's not far behind in Codeforce. OpenAI O1's model is leading in GPQA Diamond. Then DeepSeek is leading in Math 500. But then and over here OpenAI O1's model has the ground in MLU. And then over here we have SWE Bench Verified. Over here DeepSeek O1 has the lead. And over here, this is an open source model and the highest amount that it has 671 billion parameters. So now this is a very big model, but we are not going to use this model. The models we are going to use is a llama model. We're going to search here, llama, L-L-A-M-A. So now over here, there is some distilled models from DeepSeek, but over here, if you look, we have Meta Llamas 3.8. 370 billion instruct we have meta's llama 3.111 vision instruct 
So now there are a lot of llama models. If we just click over here, if we just click Meta Llama over here, and Meta Llamas are the people who created the llama model. If you look over here, they have 57 total models. They have 11 data sets and 14 collections. So if you look at all the 14 collections, we have Llama 3.3, 3.3 Eval, Llama 3.2, Llama 3.2 Eval, and the one we are going to use, Llama 3.1. We have Llama 3, we have Llama 2, we have Code Llama family, we have the Meta Llama 3.3 model and Evolve. We have Meta's Llama 3.2 multimodal models over here also. Then we have 3.1 model and Evolve and Meta's 3.2 models. So these are all of the 14 collections of the Meta's Llama models. So now let's go back to our PPT. Alright, so now let's code in Google Colab. So you may have no idea about what Google Colab is. Google Colab, short for Collaborative, is free cloud-based platform by Google that allows users to write and execute Python code in a web browser, especially for ML and data analysis. So you may ask, what are the key features? The first key feature is that it has a Jupyter Notebook environment. It also gives free GPUs and TPUs has pre-installed libraries, has real-time collaboration, and the biggest thing of all, no installation required. You can just run it directly on the browser. So now, you have just have to click this link. I will share this link in the comment section. So just click it, and you'll be taken to our Google Colab. So now, here we are on Google Colab. So here you have to put your Hugging Face token in. So once you have put our Hugging Face token, you can close this. And over here, we're going to connect to ATI for GPU. So now here, we can change runtime. So over here, if you want to pay, you can pay and get the A100, which is the top GPU. Or you can also have the L4 GPU. And also, they have given a free TPU, which is V2-8 TPU. And then the higher ones are paid. So we're only going to use a T4 GPU. So we're going to connect. So now once we have connected, let me tell you about our libraries. So the first library we're going to use is request. So request is a very popular Python library for making HTTP requests such as get, post, put, or delete. The use cases are that it's good in fetching data from APIs, web scraping, or sending requests to remote servers. Then we have Torch or as you know it, PyTorch. It's an open source deep learning library developed by Facebook. It used for tensor computations and building machine learning models for particularly deep learning. I just talked about the Meta Llama 3.3 or 3.1 models, right? They use PyTorch. As because it's developed by Facebook or now you may know it as Meta. The use cases of these libraries are for creating and training neural networks, working with GPU acceleration and handling large scale datasets. Then we have bits and bytes. It's a very lightweight library that provides 8-bit optimizers and quantization routines for PyTorch. It is commonly used to reduce memory usage and improve training speed for large models. So now here when we're using Hugging Face, we're going to download the machine's weights, biases and its neural network from Hugging Face, right? So what we're going to do is quantize it so that instead of loading it in 16-bit float, we're going to load it in 8-bit or 4-bit floats. So to install it, just write pip install bits and bytes. Then we have the Transformers library, a library developed by Huggy Face that provides state-of-the-art NLP models like Llama, GPT, Mistral, and many more. It is a go-to library for natural language processing tasks. Then we have Sentence Piece, a non-supervised text tokenizer and detokenizer library. It is widely used sub-word tokenization in NLP, particularly for open source models. So to install it, just write pip install sentence piece. We have Accelerate, a library that's developed by Huggy Face for streamlined multi-GPU and distributing training. It simplifies scaling up models and training workflows. So now here we're going to install all the libraries that we just talked about. To run a code snippet in Jupyter Notebook or Google Core Lab, just press Shift Enter. Or if you want, you can just press this run button over here. All right, so now if you look over here, it is downloading our libraries. Or you can also look over here where you can see the entire process. All right, so now it is done. 
So now let's do some imports. We're gonna import from Google.com Live. We're gonna import the user data. From Hugging Face, we're gonna import login. And from the Transformers library, we're gonna import auto tokenizer, auto model for casual LLM, and text streamer and bits and bytes config. So here we're gonna also import our torch library. So now here, once we're done, we're gonna sign into Hugging Face. We're gonna get the, our Hugging Face token, and then we're gonna log into Hugging Face, and we're gonna say add to get credential. And we're gonna put that as true. So here we have a model which is Llama 3.18 billion. So what you got to do is over here. I have given a link over here. So when you click this link, and once you're here, there will be an agreement over here. So you have to say agree to them. And over here, if you look over here, I've been granted access to this model. So if you not have been granted access to this model, you can just sit back and relax as I do it. So now we're here, Llama also accepts the same uh, message like from OpenAI. So it accepts a list of dictionaries and each dictionary has a key of role and content. So we are seeing the system message is you are a helpful assistant. And we're going to say tell a lighthearted joke for a room of data scientists. Don't tell the same joke over and over again. So I'm going to here, I'm going to remove this part over here. You can keep it the same if you want or for more complex jokes. So I'm just going to keep it like this. And over here we have a bit and bytes config. So we're going to load the weights and biases in 4-bit. We're going to use double quantization where we load it in 4-bit and 4-bit again. So we're going to say that as true. So bits and bytes 4-bit compute D type equals Torch dot b float 16. So here this means that instead of loading it in b float 16, load it in 4 bit. And so as for 4 bit quant type. So that is press shift enter. And once that has done, let's load the tokenizer for the pre trained llama model. Over here, you are using the end to end sequence or the EOS token as a pad token as because this is necessary because the llama model may not have a dedicated pad token and over here we're creating a manual input string for the messages and then we're tokenizing the input text over here or we have said to cuda as because over here cuda is a library a built-in library and that puts all of this on gpu over here so you can just press shift enter so now over here it's gonna load the tokenizer and after that we can load our llama model so we're going to load the Llama model for casual language modeling with the automatic device mapping. The model is also loaded with quantization config or quant config to optimize memory and computational efficiency. You can sit back and relax as the model's weights are downloaded. So now here what you can do is also click on view resources where you can see the GPU's VRAM. So now here the model is successfully done and if you look at the VRAM over here it's 5.5 out of 15 gigabytes so not bad so now let's check our megabytes so now here we have five thousand five hundred ninety one point five megabytes but over here if you look we should have 15 megabytes roughly it's because over here we have used a quantization right so that's why over here it's only 5591 megabytes and not 15 gigabytes so now let's look at the pytorch code of the model so now if you look at the pytorch code of the model we have the biases we have the linear four bit and people who know pytorch will know this are the back of their head so now the moment we've been waiting for let's generate a output with control generation parameters for a short joke so input IDs, we give it our uh, input IDs. Then the max new tokens that should be generated is only 100. The temperature should be 0 0.1. The nucleus sampling is 0 0.9. The repetition penalty is 1.9. So we are penalizing it if, if it repeats anything. Then we are passing the pad token ID and also the EOS token ID. And then we are printing by decoding the tokens. And we are only doing the first one. And we're also skipping the special tokens that are reserved. So now let's press enter. All right. So now it has generated a talk. If I ask you to say one thing that will make me laugh, what it would be? All right. It has generated me a really long one and it has abruptly cut off. Do you know why? As because over here, as because we have controlled the max new tokens, 
and this doesn't even look like a joke at all and that's what open source models usually lag behind uh, because they are open source so now anyway let's delete the import output model and we are going to empty the cliche so that we can free up the ram so let's just press shift enter and now if you want you can reset the runtime so you can you can say over here reset session you can press yes and now if you look over here the vram has went to zero the disk has also the disk is same but then the system ran also spiked down so if you look over here it has spiked down tomorrow we're gonna learn about rag or you may know it as retrieval augmented generation which is chapter four so folks that's it for today thanks for watching if you like this video and want to support us please like share subscribe to our channel kavi web designs keep on watching our videos and show some love this is ishank signing off